What's up YouTube? Welcome to another exciting video. Today's video I'm going to be talking about my uh, new half ounce gold Britannia. Um, if you guys are into gold and silver, investing, personal finance, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, check out my website, My Road to Wealth and Freedom. The link will be in the description down below. Quick disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor, so please do your own research before making any investment decision like buying gold or silver uh, or following any of the strategies, buying any of the stocks I discuss on this channel. It's for entertainment purposes only. So today, J Friday, June 24, 2022, uh, I just checked. Uh, so we got gold, uh, 1829, silver, 2115, oils at $3.34. Big rally on the stock market today. Dow Jones up 600 points. S&P is up 2.42%. The NASDAQ's up. 10-year uh, uh, Treasury bond is 3.13%. Uh, and that comes after uh, kind of a, a terrible week for stocks. And uh, even a lot of the resource stocks, I noticed oil got hammered yesterday. Um uh, silver and gold have, and especially the miners, have been just terrible. Uh, I, I, my own thoughts and my own personal opinion, they're probably kind of bottom, bottoming out here. This is kind of where I bottomed before, back in like January and stuff. Once they kind of get down to this level, you kind of maybe nibble, pick up some if you're not, uh, if you're not already into these stocks. Um, that said, I still believe that there's still more pain to go. I don't know. Uh, I guess one of the reasons the market's rallying really hard is because, um, and uh, I think it was the University of Michigan Consumer Confidence um, buried in there. Consumer Confidence is still terrible, by the way. But buried in that report, um, inflation expectations for next year or something like that or for i don't know the following quarters or something like that uh, fell back to 5.3 percent uh from i don't know where they were to be honest but anyway so that that led to some optimism that consumers are seeing so uh, seeing or believing that inflation will moderate remember inflation is a big part um psychology uh it's about confidence and that if you think your dollars are worth less tomorrow then you'll buy more today of the stuff that you need driving up prices and uh and it starts to kind of feed on itself so um yeah so that's leading people to think that the fed will uh, moderate its rate hiking schedule and anyways all this stuff is just chaos who knows where any of this stuff really goes the point is is that if you set yourself up if you've you know taken steps to kind of prepare your yourself financially um, you should be able to kind of weather the storm very easily. And what are some steps that, that I believe will help everybody, anybody, whether this is to not be in debt, to get out of as much debt as you possibly can. Interest rates are rising. Um, even if they do sort of moderate, um, you know, you're still going to feel the squeeze uh, with the rising cost of carrying debt. Uh, mortgages. Get out of your mortgage, um, you know, pay it off or at least make some extra payments. Um, you know, the last 10 years was really kind of a gift to, to homeowners. We had record low interest rates, you know, and rather than, you know, make extra payments and pay things off while they're paying next to nothing in interest and carrying costs for the mortgage, people just borrow to the max. And, and again, it's all, it's this whole you know, um, it's all about the payments, right? We saw that with auto loans and, and stuff like that. And same, same thing with houses. Nobody cares about the price of anything. It's always the payment. You know, as long as I can budget to the max and as long as I can, you know, um, you know, spend everything I got, be a sucker, broke, paycheck to paycheck, that sort of living, um, it's all good. Um, uh, anyways, I, uh, People should have been smarter. Obviously, they should have, you know, yeah, yeah. Buy, buy, don't buy as big of house. Don't take the maximum amount of mortgage that that the bank is willing to lend you, because um, they're just in it for themselves, and, and that's the thing. You know, these these bank economists. You know, a few months ago, it was oh, housing to the moon, and 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 uh, the narrative is is. Um, 
you know, we have a housing shortage. It's okay to buy. Prices recover and all this stuff. Now they're singing a different tune. It's like, oh yeah, hey, it's massively overvalued. It's going to like correct, you know, 20% or maybe more or whatever. And, you know, this, that, and the other. You know, it, it's all uh, lies. It's all facade. You know, they just say anything and they're in on it too, right? They have a vested interest in selling the idea. Stock markets only go up. Uh, housing only goes up. They want to lend you money against that stuff. They want you to use their services. They want you to take your hard-earned savings and pour it into the stock market. And, uh, you know, where they get all sorts of trading fees and account fees. And they, then they want you to get a, open a margin account so you can take on debt and, and lever up. And then when it all kind of collapses, you're left with nothing. And they, they have all your money. Anyways, it's part of the reason why I've taken a huge step back. For the last two years, again, I've just, you know, walked away from it all, paid off the mortgage. You know, we only got a, another couple payments left on this, um, you know, stash some cash, you know, try to, you know, sell some of my investments and, and uh, keep some cash in our retirement account and in and, and, and our other investment accounts. Um, basically just playing it super safe, you know, stacking things like gold and silver. Um, and I just feel so good. I was thinking just the other day, it just feels so good not to have, or just like not to be beholden to anybody or anything, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a true sense of like financial sovereignty, financial freedom and security, you know, when you don't have a mortgage to pay, you own your own home, you have cash savings, uh, you have precious metals, good, good, solid amount of gold and silver that, you know, uh, uh, you know, heaven forbid, like, if we end up in some sort of crazy uh, deflation or, or hyperinflation or any of these extreme scenarios, um, that we're going to be okay. We'll be able to kind of make it through and, and we'll, we'll still be largely intact financially. Um, it's, I've said this before and so I'll say it again, like it's my kind of own belief that, um, it's going to be really, really hard to make it through, um, kind of what's coming, uh, you know, without, without losing, right. Um, I think, you know, if for the average person or not even the average person, because most people don't have things like gold and silver. Most people have tons of debt. I'm talking about for the people like us who've who've uh, seen these warning signs, who've prepared, who, who have been concerned by various geopolitical events. And I'm not just talking the Russia-Ukraine thing. This is, you know, there's been this tension between the U.S. and China for the last decade. I mean, you have to be blind not to see that stuff coming. The whole Thucydides trap, you know, that was a book out in 2017. It was obvious kind of where things were going. Um, but for people who've seen that, for people who've seen uh, the money printing, uh, uh, the quantitative easing programs, um, you know, just all of this stuff, you know, inflating massive asset bubbles, um, you know, the 0% interest rate policies and negative yielding bonds and just the whole world kind of upside down. Just feel like, you know, through the looking glass or, you know, just insane. You know, for us who have concerns, who who care about um, where things are going and want to be prepared as best we can, that's what I'm talking about. And I think you know, if, if if you've done the right thing, if you have uh, no mortgage and no debt or very little debt, like that's like super manageable and there's like an actual end date in the near future to it all. Uh, if you have gold and silver, uh, you have things like even 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 some uh, Bitcoin, uh, you know, in a cold storage wallet, something that's off the exchanges. If you have um, some cash outside of the banking system that you can access um you know even if 
you've done all that stuff. And, and even if, you know, you got, you know, your investments and, in, you know, for your retirement portfolio, I do think, you know, as safe and careful as we've been, there's still, we're still gonna, there is losses uh, on the horizon. And to my mind, it's just a matter of degree, um, you know, who loses kind of the least and, and sort of what I see coming is that, you know, our, our, our home values are going to go down. Uh, there's no question about that. That's just what happens uh, when these things come home to roost. Uh, that's why I, I, I don't like when I'm trying to calculate my net worth and, and uh, you know, publish these reports on my blog and stuff like that. I don't even give the real current market value of, of my home because, you know, it could lose 50% of its value. Uh, or thirty percent, or something like that. So, uh, I've always said, you know, net worth is, um, you know, it, 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 it's it's all kind of paper gains and stuff like that. It's like, you know, you're uh, until you actually sell and and lock in the gain or loss. You know, it's it, it's you know kind of immaterial and. Uh, so, yeah, that's why I think, you know, housing price is going to go down, you know, stocks are your 401k or your RSP or your work pension. You know, these things are going to take a hit. Um, you know, if you got a 60, 40, um, you know, ETF or a mutual fund, I mean, you're, you're taking a huge hit now. You're probably down 20% easily, maybe more. Um, that's what I mean. Like there's... Things are so inflated. Things are so overvalued. Um, even though they're coming off, they're still high on a historical basis. Um, that that it's there's kind of like it, it's impossible to escape. There's really no place anybody can hide, and and uh, there are certainly places better than others. Um, that's why I think like you know you still want to be diversified. You, you, you still want to own, you know, some stocks and probably even some bonds and some real estate, some cash and some physical gold and silver. Uh, you got to stay diversified because things are so uncertain that if you take a bet, if you're, if you're willing to bet 100% on anything, any one thing, whether it's crypto or gold or real estate or whatever, then you, you, you could be completely wiped out. Uh, if if the market turns against you that so uh, it's just one of those things right financial security you know it, it puts you into a position where you don't need to um, you know hit a home run on every investment uh, that you can afford to be diversified and afford and able to accept losses in certain uh, in certain uh, uh, assets that you're allocated to um uh, and, and with a full understanding that you're probably going to be offset, those losses will be offset by gains in other areas, like notably precious metals. Um, yeah. So what am I doing? Where am I going with all this? Uh, I did want to show this coin. Uh, I had some bills to pay and, uh, and I couldn't afford uh, a full one ounce coin, but I really wanted to get uh, another piece of gold. So, I saw this. Uh, this is a 2021 half ounce Britannia. I, I've never uh, owned or bought a Britannia. Uh, uh, my gold is basically Canadian maples, some historical gold like pre-33 US, uh, some historical European like the Rooster and the Napoleon. Uh, I have an Australian one ounce kangaroo. I have, you know, some USA gold buffaloes, Canadian maples, that type of stuff. But never uh, a, a, Brit a Britannia. Uh, I'm, I guess what I have to say I like about the coin is all the different security features. Um, I think there's about four security features on this. Uh, the waves, uh, there's some small writing around uh, the edge. But the main security feature I want to it's this little thing right here and uh, it's a trident and in certain light it turns into a lock i'm not sure if you guys can can see that here yeah and there's the trident and i think there's the lock yeah 
So that's kind of a really neat feature. And what I like about uh, the Britannias is that even on a on, on a one tenth ounce, a quarter ounce, half ounce, and of course on their full ounce, they have that these security features. Um, the Canadian Maples have really great security features as well. Um, it has that um, mint mark, and uh, but that's only on the one ounce coin on the half ounce and on uh, like on the fractional gold pieces from the RCM uh, there's no uh, there's no security features uh, which is unfortunate because as we see here with the British you know they managed to put them on everything uh, and yeah so I think that's really cool uh, definitely would be interested in getting the full one ounce coin so one day I will be featuring a one ounce Britannia um, I would like to get, uh, get a few more gold ounces for the stack. And again, you know, kind of get it while you, while you can. I see in April, I just saw a report, central banks are still stacking gold heavily. Uh, they were large purchases made in April. Um, yeah, it's kind of scary when you think where all this can really go. Um, you know, what we see with the Euro uh under a lot of pressure uh there's a lot of stress the whole whole eurozone can probably collapse uh what we see over in the uk uh rampant inflation and uh there's uh labor unrest and strikes general strikes going on over in japan with the yen uh crashing uh meanwhile you know in uh in the US, Canada and Australia, like you know, there's there there's the central banks there are, are raising interest rates and trying to to um, really smash inflation, which is running at you know 30, 40, 40 year highs even. You know, Canada's latest CPI print was I think seven point seven percent or something like that. I mean, it's just crazy to think that, you know, we're we have this much inflation and it's getting worse so far. It's it's not getting better month after month. Like it still hasn't peaked just when we thought it would kind of peak. Uh, you know, people were thinking that it was peaking back in March and that it's starting to moderate. It's, it's nowhere near that. The prices at the grocery store are rising uh, big time. Uh, I'll, I'll confess, you know, I didn't quite see the you know, food price increases, um, you know, over the last few months. In fact, I even thought like prices had come down a little bit. Um, but uh, no, now they're back with a vengeance. You know, just I noticed just offhand, you know, the price of bread, you know, even if you get the no name, you know, white bread, it's up 20 cents a, a bag. And I mean, that's, you know, just kind of one little thing that I noticed. Uh, of course, there's lots of other stuff, but um and this is all stuff that's really squeezing people. You know, the cost of gas is still really high, although it has come off as oil kind of dropped there this past week. Um, it's staying relatively high, nearly $2 a liter. Um, and this is all over. In the U.S., I think some areas I saw that Elon Musk thing posted $7, over $7 a gallon. That must have been California or something like that. It's just, it's just, uh, it's incredible. And uh, at this time, you know, you want to protect yourself and you want to prepare um, kind of well we still can. Um, so hopefully uh, you guys are all, um, you know, stacking and, you know, paying off debt and, uh, you know, just being very cautious in these uncertain times. Um, one of the things that I, I'm looking for is I'd like to to uh, uh invest a bit in farmland so i've been checking out some etfs on farmland farmland um for it's really hard to invest uh if you're just like you know the small investor uh it's it's tough to find a, a decent farmland investment um the price of farmland easily uh in uh, in ontario is well over a million dollars and, uh, you know, if you look out to like Saskatchewan and to kind of the, the western part of the country, um, you know, you, you really kind of have to know what you're doing. Um, 
to invest there. So that's why I'm kind of looking at ETFs, even though they're not the greatest, they are correlated with stock markets and stuff like that. And it, it is a, it essentially a financial security. It's not the real physical farmland. Uh, I do feel like they do offer investors, the small investor an avenue to uh, participate in the rise in, in uh, farmland and stuff like that. But Anyways, that's all uh, I was thinking about there today. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, check out my website, My Road to Wealth and Freedom. Enjoy the weekend.